This is Don't Panic, episode number 231, recorded February 4th, 2019. Super bored. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, you. Uh, I'm Sean Jennings, joined as always by our own MVPs, a couple future Hall of Famers, Colby Rabideau and Dan Miller. <laughs> Gentlemen. Uh, yeah. I, I just What's saw that? the episode title from last week, Whole Hawaiian, and I liked it. Thank you. I, I, that's the one I feel most proud of. I usually half-ass the titles, but that one, <laughs> Whole Hawaiian Punch. Super bored, I thought, was really only makes sense <laughs> if we talk about the Super Bowl. Otherwise, people are going to be really confused. Well... I would like you to talk about the Super Bowl because I didn't watch it for the first time in several years. Whoa. Maybe, like, probably five or six years. Well, you and the entire city of New Orleans skipped out. In one of those years, because the power went out. Wait, well, is that, that the t- reference you're making? Oh, no, because uh, they were mad about the, uh, the the call that may have cost them the game to get into the Super Bowl. So the whole city made a bit. They had, like, a big protest out in the streets during the Super Bowl and made I a big see. deal not to watch it. Well, no, I wasn't aware of that, but I'm curious, as you're, you're both Patriots fans, I believe. It's true. Born and raised. Um, what did you think about that, that barn burner of a game? I mean, you know, Dan, they say defense wins championships, but defense also puts <laughs> me to sleep. So, <laughs> bit torn. Snooze fest. Bit torn. Yeah, not the most uh, yeah. thrilling game. It was weirdly, uh, like, nothing... No. Nothing happened in the first half. Put it this they way. They made a bunch of mistakes. Brady threw an interception. They missed the kick. You know there's one guy out there who's like a super fan of punts. And he, this was the <laughs> game for that guy. Right. He's like, another <laughs> punt? What? Uh, yeah, it was all punts. If, if, that, if that was your drinking game, drink every time there's a punt, you probably ended up in the hospital. It was not good. But this it always drives me crazy because when we do it for debate, I talk with Matt, who's a big baseball fan, and he's always... We had this big debate. He thinks home runs are bad in baseball because he likes low-scoring games because it's all about the mind game. And I'm going to give him so much shit on Thursday oh about it. Oh, my God. Like, but you hated the Super Bowl, but you love when baseball games are 0-0 because it's a battle of the mind. <laughs> tick. Drives me crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like it wouldn't... Either way, a baseball game has been historically pretty boring for me, so... You're not wrong. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whether they're not scoring or, or like how exciting is a home run, really? <laughs> it's it's not right. Like it's not. I can't tell. Like it just happens. There's no there's no anticipation. I can't be like, oh man, they're totally gonna get a home run this time. It could happen at any point. So, anyways, that's that's my 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 whole problem with baseball is that there's no. The, the drama is purely in the storyline. There's no in-game. There's no micro-drama. Yes. <laughs> in football, you can be like, oh, man, look, he like let, he has the ball, and that guy's going to try to get it over there. Can he get it over there? And, like, okay, that's – I wish it happened more frequently than it does in football, but at least you got you got something to hang on to. And if there is ha- something happening on the screen, there's something you can invest yourself in. Do we have any ideas uh, on how we could improve baseball? Well – you know, you know, you know about big baseball, right? No, what's bi- no? Please tell me about big baseball. <laughs> it's a stolen bit from Dubai Friday, but the the bit is, uh, if you just take all sports and you made one element of them really big, okay, uh, they would all be better. So you just make <laughs> the baseball really big, and you're you're hitting them with like like a beach ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a beach ball, and you're I don't know what you're hitting them with then, like lacrosse sticks or something at that point. Uh, I think football would be better if they made their helmets really big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, uh, but big football with the giant football and it, it ends up be being kind of like too. rugby. You just kind of like roll that thing down the field. So it just becomes a big brawl in the middle. I like that. It's kind of like a almost like a tug of war when you've got something that big and a bunch of guys just trying to move it. Right, and then you got when you get to the end zone, you're, one of your good bets is probably going to be to to try to pop it up over the defensive line. But think about that interception. I don't know how interception rules are going to work. You might get crushed. <laughs> how do you define control of the ball when the ball is three people wide? I, you, uh, we kind of just invented volleyball almost. Oh <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's, that's my big theory about how to make baseball more exciting. 
I can tell you what what won't do it is to make it like cricket, though. Um, I've never seen cricket played like. Well, I've seen it played, but I've never uh, like a. You never understood cricket. what the hell's going on. Yeah. You, I've you never like else. been to a been to a cricket, um, with the intention of of seeing what was happening. Yeah, I've never seen a game live either, but I just know that they can take days, and I've I've tried to understand it and uh, have been unable to. Have I have I ranted to you all about yes. one of my newfound interests, uh, oh. the the UK Parliament? <laughs> <laughs> speaking of oh uh, <laughs> speaking of obtuse British customs like cricket you know Dan I could have guessed a lot of ways this episode was going to go this evening <laughs> and you have just veered this car at 80 miles per hour right off the freeway go ahead Dan no we haven't heard your rant on the parliament yet I'm, I'm going to go excited. ahead and guess that we do not have much tech news this week almost none So I, yeah, we got the, the Apple Facebook drama that's it um Okay, so this is my new favorite topic. Uh, a couple weeks ago, probably a month ago, there was a, some Brexit news. There was some big vote that was happening. Um, and leading up to it, I saw this video on Twitter of this guy. He's sort of, he's standing, have you seen the British uh, Parliament? It's like this rectangular room with like chairs on either side and then some stuff in the middle. Yeah. And there's this guy in the middle of that stuff in the middle. And he's getting up. He's uh, and someone no someone asked him. He's like, uh, "Excuse me, sir. Uh, there's been some news in the press that uh, there's been a bumper sticker spotted on your car, and it is an anti-Brexit bumper sticker." And at this point, everyone starts going boo. And he's like, "I want to know, is that your bumper sticker? And how can you prove to us that you're impartial?" And this guy gets up and he gives this long relatively long-winded thing the guy who's been accused the guy in the center of the room and he's like you know i know that you don't mean any offense and i normally wouldn't interrupt you but i have to correct a a factual error on behalf of the right honorable gentleman uh it's like that is not my car that's my wife's car and i know that you would not dare suggest not for one moment that she is somehow the property of me or chattel and not entitled to her own views. And at this point, everyone's like, woo! Like, everyone's going crazy. And he goes, that bumper sticker is not mine, and that's the end of it. It's like, what in the hell is going on? I had so many questions after I watched this. It's like, first of all, why is everyone booing and then, like, shouting? What, why is this so exciting? Second of all, who the hell is this guy? Why is he in the middle of the room? And why is this other guy calling him out about some bumper sticker he read about in a tabloid? So, you'll be happy to know that I answered all these questions and more. In the UK Parliament, uh, the Speaker of the House, much like in the US, is elected by the members of the body. Not It's not an elected position that's put up to a vote countrywide. Mm -hmm. Unlike the United States, when you become Speaker of the House, you have to leave all of your political parties. You take a vow of impartiality, and you can't vote on anything anymore. And for that matter, neither can the assistant speakers or any of the vote tallyers. So there are about 15 people in Parliament at any given time who cannot vote because they're in administrative positions. Um, very interesting. Uh, the speaker is long tenured. It's like uh, it, it, it's like it's like a career politician thing in like the State Department. You're not specific to an administration or a party. You stay for as long as people keep voting for you. Um, but this is this. You could imagine this working in the U.S. except for the two-party system. So whichever party has more votes, just going to vote in someone who's always going to go with what they want. They don't want a controversial person. But in the U.K., you have to form a coalition government. So neither the conservatives nor the liberals can vote in one of their own partisan hacks. They have to. They have to get someone, put someone up who is amenable enough to either a portion of the other party or some of the minor party representatives. Which, so what ended up happening is this guy is a very colorful character. He used, he's the son of a taxi cab driver. He was voted in. He's conservative, voted in by the Liberal Party because he was voting more and more against the conservatives. So the conservatives hated him. The liberals knew that they could never win with one of their candidates, but they knew that this guy could get elected. 
So they nominated a person from the other party, <laughs> and, and he got in with almost no one from his party voting for him. Um, and now he's been there for like 15 years. Wow. Uh, and the Brexit thing is crazy because all like there's all these rules uh, that that have only been exercised once, and he's been like taking, uh, reasserting the role of Parliament as like a, a we call it here what's the thing the three houses of government executive judicial branches yes like reasserting the role of Parliament and I'm like oh that sounds pretty good um, but I just think uh, oh also every, you people debate things on the floor of parliament they actually debate in like 90 second chunks they go back and forth and you cannot speak if you're not standing and if you speak while you're sitting from a quote a sedentary position you're kicked out um (laughs) you have to be standing only one person can be standing at a time if the speaker is standing no one else is allowed to stand um and there's all these rules about decorum it's very british but here's my my big I i feel like that was a rule in kindergarten too right and he honestly, there's these amazing YouTube videos of this guy just ripping these politicians a new one for speaking from a sedentary position. Or like this one time, uh, the what's his name, Boris Johnson, the guy with the, the crazy hair, uh, referred to another member of parliament by her spouse's title. So he was like, oh, it's Lord whatever's wife. And he got chewed out by the speaker guy saying, we do not... He called her Lady So and So, and he's like, "We do not name call in this chamber." And moreover, this person has a name, and I know you know what her name is. Uh, and he took away the rest of his time; he couldn't speak. Uh, imagine if, in the U.S. government, we had a mostly impartial third party running the chambers of Congress, who could uh, discipline members for doing stupid things, and who has the power to uh, bring the prime minister to parliament every week for questioning by imagine imagine Donald Trump showing up to congress <laughs> for questioning for 45 minutes every week by whoever this impartial third party decides to recognize and allow to stand up that would be cool it's it's a wonder why we ever broke off from their government i mean <laughs> they the wi- so, okay, and here's the other crazy thing, right? I'm talking about the House of Parliament. There's also the House of Lords, which on the face of it, you'd be like, oh, that must be their Senate. No, no. House of Lords is not elected. It is nominated by themselves. They nominate one another, and they have no power at all. They have absolutely <laughs> no power. But they are also on TV. They're given equal billing. So they sit around, and they're the ones with the crazy wigs. And... <laughs> And just like it's like reality TV, none of it matters. They take bills from Parliament. They can hold them for ninety days, but after that point, it goes to the Prime Minister anyway. Uh, so <laughs> literally, nothing that they do matters. It's such a bizarre system, but I still feel like it's a better system than than we have. Or at least it's exciting. It's exciting, and then I started once I learned all about this. I was like, wait, how does the U.S. government work? Like now, I'm questioning everything. <laughs> Did you know that in the Senate, for example, uh, you know, you see those videos of like, you know, someone speaking on the Senate floor. Mm-hmm. You ever notice that, first of all, no one else is talking on like House of Parliament. But you ever notice there's also no one else there? Yeah, there's no one else there. They're speaking to the camera to an empty room. Yep. No one ever talks to one another. There is no debate because no one's there to hear what the other person said. Although I will say that tradition does hold one of my favorite things about our government, which is the uh, Congress uh, large printed chart. Yeah. <laughs> which if you've ever watched C-SPAN, I love those where they have the giant like cardboard printout of like some chart of the deficit. And then sometimes they're very weird or funny, yes. um, you know, handwritten or just some ridiculous chart. I do like those. I do. We have to we should keep those. So, fun. here's another U.S. government fun fact. When that person is speaking to the empty room, like, you know, Ted Cruz is filibustering for 36 hours or whatever, there is a one other person, one other senator in that room. The, the most junior senators who were most recently elected all take turns playing the part of the Speaker of the House when the Vice President doesn't want to do it, which is never. He's never there, mm-hmm. except when he has to cast a vote. 
they have to sit in that chair and do the like Robert's Rules of Order stuff for as long as the other person wants to talk. And they rotate this responsibility. But they have no actual power because they would be uh, exercised from their party if they asserted any any rules whatsoever. Huh. Well, you know, I'd say it just doesn't pay to be in the government, but it literally pays very well when you leave and take a cushy lobbying job. Um, oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, so I, yeah, I don't know if either of you have any opinions on this. Um, Do we have any opinions on the government? Is, is like, that what you just asked us? No, just like two. <laughs> I, I, here's the thing I find most interesting. Do you think it would matter... I have two questions. Do you think it would matter if the Speaker of the House had to renounce all political parties and was uh, and was elected by all members of the the House or Congress equally? That's question number one. And question number two is, uh, do you think it would matter if uh, debates were held on the Senate floor? If at, if at any point the Speaker of the House could recognize someone else to refute something that someone just said? Would, would that change like our political dynamic would things move faster with things could you just not not hold a vote for a month because that's something like you couldn't have the mitch mcconnell situation in the british system because the Don parson guy would be like yeah sure we'll have a vote like no skin off my back mm. we'll vote as much as you want i think like 50 years ago that idea works i just feel like today you just couldn't you just can't be impartial. I just I just feel like it would be really hard to get someone neutral that everyone could agree on. And on top of that, I just feel like those debates would just be a disaster. Maybe an entertaining disaster, but, but it would it would it would be a disaster and it and it would certainly be more entertaining than what we have now, but I would argue it would also be informative. Like you would actually yeah. hear people like it wouldn't just be one senator getting up for 30 minutes to talk about this bill and all the earmarks that they want to put in it. But if you it, would talk about the actual thing, like, should we pay for this this way? But it's it's all bloviating. I mean, if you're a nerd like me and have listened to any entire House hearings, uh, you know what it's like to have a senator or congressperson just, uh, you know, sit up there and just say nothing for their allotted time against the person on the other side who said the opposite thing. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little cynical. But, but that, the, the, the hearings don't feel like debates. They're like talking via... They're debating via questions to a third person. They can't address one another, but I don't think. that's what I'm think. saying. I don't think they would address one another. Well, I think that's what needs to change. I agree. No, hey, look, on paper, I'm totally with you. I just think that you get you get two people out there, and they're going to just try and make their points, and they're not going to listen to what the other person says or really craft a good argument. I don't. I don't care if they listen. I want other people to listen. Uh, I don't. I don't know, Colby. Tell us <laughs> this will work. Say, save the government, please. I don't care <laughs> if the senators change their minds. I understand that they would never do it. But if if there was an entertaining vehicle by which to get multiple viewpoints but on I, an it. actual issue, I don't think they would present strong viewpoint, like well crafted viewpoints. I think it would all be about talking points and catchphrases and and slanted quote unquote facts. And I just think it's hard to get a a fair as much as you can get it debate. Hmm. I I think I agree with Sean in that I'm a little skeptical of what this debate would look like. Uh, that being said, I've never really seen the British Parliament one, so maybe it's a thing I could should look into. I'll put some but, videos in the show notes. Yeah, but I will. I I like the 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 other thing where like the speaker and the other like administrative people are like a third party and they can't vote right right they're like out outside the game that sounds super cool sounds and there good. is a there is a little incentive there where like you know if you become speaker of the house you want to stay speaker of the house right so at that yeah, point it's pretty you, cool you're playing a new politics game of not pissing off either of the parties right but right. you're not beholden to them and like the situation where it's it, you know it was said during the shutdown that most Republicans probably did want to hold votes on stuff, 
then at that point, he doesn't care about what Mitch McConnell thinks, the speaker. He only cares about what the majority of, of all Congress people think of how he's conducting the business of the day. Sean's, Sean's unconvinced. I like, okay. I like it. I don't know, because right. then you, you have something even, uh, maybe it's minor, but something to, like, the most frustrating stuff in the government is the, like, the meta game, right? Especially when you see the meta game where it's like, we're just going to put this off until it's convenient for us. Yeah. That's lame. Dan, don't let don't let my jaded nature slow down your revolution over <laughs> our government. I, I I support you're an innovative thinker. Uh you're you're a man ahead of his time, I think. I think you should boldly go forward. I don't know. I I, I just like copying people's good ideas. I will be, well but <laughs> hey look, that's you know take it till you make it, you know. That's just steal away. Would would either of you ever run for public office? Um, maybe like a stupid public office, like n- not dog Comptroller. catcher, but, What's but a it's, it, yeah, something like that, you know, <laughs> like when, when, when I'm just elected to do some job, mm, yeah, you know, I like that, like uh, that, I would do that in the, in the spirit of service. If, if it was something that I felt like I could help with, then, then I would run and make the case, but I would not run for like city council be as far as I would ever consider going. I was certainly like mayor is already. I would never run for mayor of anything. I mm. think we should start a write-in campaign for Dan. <laughs> Dan for mayor uh, of just, New just, York. Just pick, <laughs> no, no. I think we should just pick a position somewhere, just somewhere in, you know, like point. the school board in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and just see if we can get Dan elected. I like we it. have that kind of reach, don't we? I don't think I can because uh, would I have to move to Chattanooga? Well, I mean, to serve the people, yeah, I would hope so. You got to okay. live in the community you serve. <laughs> I hear the schools there are terrible. Um, I might, I would consider running for office. I could see it. I just, uh, I, you would make a very good politician in in the mac in like the micro game sense. I feel like you're you're very strategic, and you 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 know you're also not someone who uh, you don't take controversial stances. You have you have a pulse on what is normal. Thank you. I think what you're trying to say, Dan, is that I am a uh, sort of amorphous. Uh, I, I'm I'm a real uh, Kevin Spacey in House of Cards type, where I'm just <laughs> I will do whatever it takes. Not the bad part of Kevin Spacey, no, the House of Everything Cards character, great, the Frank yeah. Underwood uh, of politics. Yeah, you, I take that as a compliment. You, yeah, you're like yeah, you'll you'll believe whatever you need, like. You, you, you don't strike me as so if someone if your community was like, hey, Sean, I want you to believe this and vote this way. I think you'd be, you could do it. You'd be like, anything right, to yeah. stay in power, Dan. Anything to stay right. in power. I look. I'll be honest. Would I make a good politician? Maybe. Hey, who knows? You know, this could be the start of a great political career. However, I don't like being around people, so I feel like that would really slow me down. So here's what I'm going to propose. I think I need. I'm a good like behind the scenes chief of staff. Ooh, yeah, and I need a charismatic, special advisor, outgoing, likable candidate to get behind. That's why tonight I'm officially <laughs> launching Colby for Congress. Oh, Go to colbyforcongress.org right now and and make your contribution. We're gonna get him elected to a position. <laughs> oh boy! How, how many districts does Rhode Island have? One, two, two. He can have both. This is going to be great. No, I don't know if there's two. I think there's two, though. Elizabeth Warren might be giving up her Senate seat, Colby. You could run for it. That's true. <laughs> I'm basically Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, I mean, kind of. And that's, that's what we're going to position you as. It worked well for her. <laughs> right. You know, you know, she went to Harvard, taught at you Harvard. Did. Colby I went, went to, to Marist. Marist. The, the Harvard of Poughkeepsie. <laughs> Both liberal <laughs> arts schools. I feel like uh, Vassar would object. <laughs> yeah, it's more like the Yale of Poughkeepsie. But, you know, we'll, we'll take it. Should I buy Colby for Congress.com right now? <laughs> it, I'm, I would be shocked if it wasn't taken because I think it's not taken. I can't be the first political operative to have this idea. But it, but it has to be Colby the number four Congress. Oh, okay. That's That's the catchy thing. What would your slogan Col- be, Colby? Colby for Congress dot biz. <laughs> <laughs> Colby for Congress dot pizza. 
<laughs> well, I'm trying to think of what you're because you know Obama had like hope and change, and you know Donald Trump had make America great again. What would Colby's political slogan be? <laughs> feels good. It would be feels, feels good. Feels good. Yeah, Colby Rabbit or feels, feels bad good. depending depending on the the right know, the with, message. The tone My of the opponent times. feels bad. I <laughs> feel good. I feel like the American people could really latch on to that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty straightforward. Like, uh, you know, I'm listening. See, uh, uh, my esteemed colleague, I'm listening to the words coming out of your mouth, and it just feels bad. <laughs> who, can, who can argue with? Everyone's that? wearing hats that say "feel bad" on them and "feel good" on them. You like turn them around. It's very merchandisable. You know, get the yeah. get the feels good bumper sticker. Man, we're That's building poli- the the feels good super pack. Because <laughs> let me be clear, my candidate Colby Rabideau absolutely takes corporate contributions. The bigger, the better. <laughs> we're talking big oil. We're talking the corn industry. We're talking, you name it, we'll accept we're it. We're talking big baseball. Big anything. We'll big, take big baseball, anything. big tennis. Big big sheep. It doesn't matter. We'll take your money. <laughs> it's true. It's true. No scruples. <laughs> Your slogan, Kobe <laughs> no scruples. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good parentheses, no scruples. I, I, I this is we've we've really begun something. Of all of our wonderful ideas we've had, this is one of them. <laughs> <sighs> oh, boy, this begs a really important question: What is a scruple? It's like a scrapple. You know, uh, scrapple. It's is? a spoil. Is it a spoiled scrapple? Is a scruple? Like, mm-hmm. oh, don't eat that Scrapple. It's now Scruple. Right. <laughs> oh, I got sick last night. I had to that turn, Scruple. Screwed it up. Screwed it up. You, you screw the Scrapple to get Scruple. That's right. That's a, They got bad Scrapple over there. Huh? From, the, from the Pennsylvania Dutch. There you go. And we figured it out. Wow. Good job, guys. <laughs> what a uh, time to be alive. Speaking of no scruples, uh, let's talk about Facebook. Whoa, Dan, I think I just had whiplash on that pivot. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, let's talk about it. Guys, would it surprise you to learn Facebook has done something shady? <laughs> not anymore. Uh, which which not. thing are we going <laughs> to yeah, yeah, I was about to say, which story this week? And it's <laughs> funny because there were about two or three of them. You're not wrong. Um, we're going to focus on the big one. Um, guys... I'm going to pitch you a scenario here, and you tell me if this is a good idea or a, a, a feels good, feels bad, okay? <laughs> Imagine there was a company out there, okay? An all-encompassing company whose goal it Johnson was... Johnson & Johnson. That, a, a, similar. We'll use that as a stand-in. And okay. their goal was to collect as much information about everybody as humanly possible. So they went okay. and developed an app. Um, and that app, uh, the way it worked was they would take... Um, a bunch of preteens and teens, ages twelve to seven or thirteen to seventeen, and encouraged them to sign up for a paid social media study. Uh, and it was uh, called Applause. And the way it would work is for twenty dollars a month, they would pay these teens uh, to give this giant company, we'll say Johnson and Johnson, every single piece of information on their phone, including uh, unencrypted access to all of their network traffic the apps they used, uh, their browsing activity, private messages and emails, web searches, even ask for things like screenshots of their Amazon order history, and I'll send it back to this giant national multi-conglomerate company. Would you say that that's kind of bad? They're paying them, Sean. What would it take? Let me ask you guys, in in 100% seriousness, what would a company have to pay you per month for this kind of access? Seriously, pick a number. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, uh, like, w- they know every website that I've visited. Yes. And, like, everything I've ordered on Amazon. Yep. I feel like Google already knows this. So then, are you saying it'd be cheap? Uh, I'm saying... <laughs> I'm saying I want 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like a lot of work. But I feel like Google, like, I, what does this... I understand what this survey, like, maybe gets Facebook that they already that they don't already know. Like, it would be tough for Facebook to get your Amazon orders. Right. 
But Google, if you search for that thing that you ordered, like, I feel like Google, especially if you're using Gmail, can probably infer. Oh, sure. If you bought something. But, but part of this, too, was also <sighs> private messages as well and, and emails. Right. That, that they had access to as well, which Google might not. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't do it for 20 bucks. Um, I feel like, though, I don't know, $10,000? $10,000 sounds pretty good. A month? It's just, it's just a one-time thing? No, per month. It's an ongoing thing. Oh, per month? Yeah, per month. Oh, maybe two or three hundred dollars. Yeah, that seems about... I was thinking maybe five hundred. But I got yeah. a lot of secrets, so... I mean, I'm uh, listen, I'm going to start at a thousand dollars a month. Oh, and work your way. That, that's smart. Negotiate. Right. <laughs> start from a place of power. Right. That's what you got to do. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, this, uh, a couple big problems here. One, of course, they are targeting people who are supposed to have parental consent to do things like what they're asking them to. That's just one small part. The other big part is how exactly do they get access to all that information? They do it by granting root access to iPhones. Now, of course, they don't just let any app do it. Uh, Facebook was using um, Apple's uh, developer program to, and, and maybe you guys know a little bit more about how this works than I do, but they were using enterprise certificates to grant root access on iPhones. Um, I don't think that root access is the right word. They, the enterprise certificate is what something, like Etsy had this for internal apps, like the employee directory app or like the internal chat app yeah. uh, that you didn't want so, to put on the app store, but you right. wanted to distribute. Yeah, it lets you like bypass uh the app store to install apps like but that right. you you control totally but otherwise as far as i know it's still the same restrictions the the, old, the same things are are possible well, like there's you don't you're not granted any new abilities i'm gonna do some more research because actually i don't know if that's true according to the article i'm reading in the you typically like you can get this is a vpn that they they use right uh, something that intercepts all of your network traffic, virtual private network. Uh, and there are apps on the App Store that are VPNs. Like, well, Ghostery has one, and there's a couple others. So th I, I'm pretty sure this was just that. Keep keep talking. I'm trying to figure out how okay. all this works because it's very confusing. Yeah. I guess now I'm wondering, like, was it just a VPN app thing that you downloaded and it was like a VPN or was it a... Uh... Because I, I, I also read the thing about how, and this happened to Google too, where, where Apple revoked their developer cert certificate so all their internal company apps stopped working. Right. Um, as As a sort of like... You violated. You've you've, you know, knowingly and and perhaps maliciously violated the terms of our. The terms of our developer program, like. You're yeah. out. You're done. This Which was the, a very reasonable response. It, it's obvious to any developer that that program is not for public distribution. Yeah. Right. Developers from a very early age know what like the word enterprise means. It does <laughs> not mean posted on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was very clearly not in the rules. I don't know the answer to the question of what exactly the difference is between a VPN and root network access is, and I don't feel technically... Well, root safe. network access is... I don't know. What, I can infer what that means. It's not an official term that I have heard of. Well, uh, so so there's screenshots here that uh, of the process that it would take to get the teens into the program. And there is a box that says root certificate warning. Enabling this certificate for websites will allow third parties to view any private data yeah. hit continue. Um, now, does that grant more access than what a VPN would allow? I don't know. Um, I'm not going to speculate. I th that could be one of two things. It could be the certificate that like Facebook had that signs they sign their apps with. So that what that does is say like, hey, here's a, a app ho posted to the App Store Apple. 
and we're certifying that we it came from us. And then Apple signs it and says, we are certifying that uh, that we approve this app. If you don't have that Apple certification, apps usually will not install on your iPhone. But if you get this the uh, Facebook's certification uh, certificate and put it on your phone, then you can install Facebook's apps without Apple's thing. And I think that's what that warning is. I think that's part of it, but I think it's bigger. So I've been reading through this TechCrunch article. It's extremely in-depth. It's actually very interesting. But I believe it is a root network certificate, which is separate. I think you're right, Dan, but I think there was a separate certificate that, that they had to accept. And the difference between that and VPN is VPN only tracked internet transmissions, but this root certificate, actually, that's how they got access to your messages, to your phone call records, to your GPS data, to every piece of information your phone was sending, a greater level of access than what a VPN would allow. Interesting. Maybe that, is that an SSL certificate? I, I don't know. It's just some kind of access on your phone. Weird. Yeah, uh, above our pay grade a little bit. What I will say is that you guys are absolutely right. This clearly violates Apple's terms of service, um, and immediately uh, Apple shut them down and their ability to distribute internal iOS apps. Um, however, that ban lasted for all of, like, two or three days, and then they now have access again to do that, um, yeah. unfortunately. Um, interestingly they enough... Do? Oh, yeah, that's disappointing. Yeah, and interestingly enough, they're not the only company to have done this, um, probably the biggest to get caught, but uh, Google had a similar um, issue recently. Uh, they were, Their internal iOS apps were blocked uh, this past week as well uh, because they were running a, uh, a research project as well. The, their... Um, ScreenWise meter app. Um, the private app was designed to monitor how people use their iPhones similar to the research app um, and use the same process of subverting the app store. Um, and apparently after all of this came out, um, apparently Amazon is doing it as well. Um, DoorDash may be doing it. There are a number of apps that rely on sidestepping the app store. Um, in addition, apparently a common process. People are now asking what... Um, you know what? What does this mean for the the certification process for the the enterprise program? What what changes might have to be made? Mm. Yeah, and there are also people who are like they thought that Apple shouldn't have done this. Did you read any of those takes, Sean? That Apple shouldn't have um, shut them down. Shouldn't have punished them so severe, so quote unquote severely. Uh, at the time, I think they didn't know that that this was going to be revoked. The punishment would be revoked so quickly. Yeah. Um, they're like, you can't interfere with a company's internal business just because they broke one of your rules. Uh, um, like, what if what if, what if, if some company violated one of Microsoft's um, uh, EULAs and one of their pieces of software and they just turned off Office 365 for, for a couple of days? I mean, uh, Dan, nobody even reads the terms of service. How can you be expected to follow them? Uh, <laughs> Which is exactly the legal justification I would use if I ever got in trouble. Um, <laughs> see how that works for me. No, I I mean, I think it's... I don't know. I just think at some point, it's Apple's ecosystem, and they have to say enough is enough. I mean, this is... Again, it's not just the simple fact that they were collecting data using this system, but they were targeting 13 to 17-year-olds and not telling them it was Facebook doing it. You know? I think it's... I think it was shady on just enough levels to real and and we didn't get into this nor do I really want to because now we're getting really detailed. But uh, earlier in uh, last month or a couple months ago, Facebook had tried to sneak their um, Onovo VPN app um, that was harvesting users' information in the app store as well, and they got a slap on the wrist from Apple for doing that, and they basically repurposed that code for this app and and really kind of a blatant mm-hmm. slap in the face to Apple. So. You know, at some point, and they have to do something. Enough is enough. You know, it's it's one thing to, okay, DoorDash wants to have a secret app only their employees can use, and that's how they distribute it. Is through this, okay, maybe, but you know, you, you can't have Facebook be you know paying teens to steal all their data using their iPhones. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The the sort of shadiness of it is is. Uh... I don't know. <laughs> like on the one hand, it's incredible, but on the other hand, like totally believable. 
Now, Colby, I don't know if you can say anything about this, but when you were at Facebook, were there were there a lot of reckons internally about this sort of thing? Like, was this was were like were there lots of ideas like this that were that were discussed, or were people would people come to an all hands and be like, I don't know, sh- should we be doing this? Was that a controversy? I mean, I I never I had never heard of this. This was not a thing. Not I was Not this aware specifically, of. but like, were there? Uh, oh, about just more generally about, about like yeah privacy uh was privacy some like i know that facebook talked a lot about privacy from a like security internal security standpoint yeah. i think ha- around the time i was there uh i feel like we were talking about a lot about like sharing privacy like Mm, trying to help people understand like who they were posting to and when they were posting, when they were posting and like what this is part, part partially because I worked on the, the like sharing team. Right. But like, right. you know, it was, it was that like trying to get, trying to help people understand who they were talking to. Um, and like, like make sure people could like choose who, who saw what, I guess. Um, but that's the sort of privacy we were talking about in 20, what, when was I there? 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, like this stuff was, I'm trying to think the, the only, the only like device privacy thing I remember was like Android, the Android app, um, I don't think this is still the case, but at the time it was like their permissions on Android were all or nothing where like you either could accept all the permissions that any app was ever going to to need or ask for, or you just couldn't use the app. Yep. Um, And so there were all kinds of like neat, like features that like most of, you know, most of them started out innocently who knows how they developed, but there were things where like, you know, it would read like your two factor auth code, like right from your text messages. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty, pretty innocuous, like sort of convenient. Um, but everyone, uh, everyone with the, with the Android app installed had to accept like Facebook being able to read all your text messages to do that, which is like, "Mm." like, I don't know if I, (laughs) do you want that? Um, and you know, like once it's there, it's there. It's it's not like you take it back really. Um, so there was that kind of stuff and, and like at least some of the, the people who worked on those apps that like I knew were like kind of frustrated by it. Really they were frustrated with like Android and, and Google or whoever was making those decisions because it was like, it wasn't very honest. Right, right. It made it seem really bad. Um, and it never, you know, uh, it never gave them, it didn't give the developers a chance to say, hey, like, we'd like to enable this thing right now so we can do this thing. Um, right. Presumably that has improved a lot in the last, what, like, five yeah, years. But... I'm pretty sure Android fixed that. Yeah. Okay, Interesting. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I have no idea if this was going on then. It could have been. Well, certainly, uh, certainly, all these companies are up to something. No doubt about that. Um, you know. Yeah. Keep your Always eyes up teams. to something. It's just sad that we've aged out of the demographic where people care about us anymore. Yeah. No. No one to... is trying. No one is paying me twenty dollars no. to see my using history. Remember when we used to be a prime advertiser demographic? Yeah. They used to they used to want us. They used to tailor ads to us and now we're just nobodies. Again. Yeah. I think they realized our lack of disposable income. <laughs> they were very smart. They we said, don't that, want to buy right. a house. We we forgot this generation has no money. Shit. Except Sean did buy a house. Did buy and now I don't have any money. <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> uh suckers. You guys done your tax returns yet? No. Did you? It's I'm waiting on one piece of paperwork, so it's all done. I just got to get uh, one piece of paperwork in. You should get it done early this year. Yeah, so no one steals that? your return. 
Well, that and because what? they don't know how the government shutdown is going to affect the speed, so you get your request in earlier mm -hmm. in case uh, refunds are delayed. Oh, now, yeah, the government if, might, might shut down again next week, too. Yeah. So. Now, I have, I have a question. If someone tries to steal your tax return, but it turns out you don't get a tax return, you owe money, do they also have to pay? <laughs> do they have to pay? I mean, if it makes you feel better, I'll say yes, but I don't think it works that yeah. way. No. Yeah. What no. is the stealing thing? So what they do is they go and they file your taxes pretending to be you, and then they steal your refund, assuming you get a refund. Yes, your refund. Sorry, I said they steal your tax return, which is probably less lucrative. Yes, exactly. Uh, but it is the first so, step wait, towards. Is it, I would imagine that if one was able to do this, my, my identity has been completely compromised. I think the idea is that you know if you're so, using like a like a tax return software or something, you've already put your data in, and they kind of get in there before you file it. I don't think the idea is that they've also stolen your W-2 and your, your 1099 HC. No, but like your... they must have to have my social security number in yep. order to file my taxes. Yep. So I would imagine that if you had that information, you could get a lot more out of me than just like, like whatever, 200 bucks or whatever. But a ta I would think a tax return is easy because you just have to find somewhere to send the money. You know, like I could also take out a loan in your name, but there's a lot of extra paperwork that goes with that, a lot of signatures and things like that. Tax return is easy because it's all digital now. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you get the check and you run. Yeah, you you imper you impersonate me and you you call my bank and you change my password and you transfer all my money somewhere else. If you got yeah, but, my social security number. But because it's coming from a bank, a lot of banks have like. Uh, you know, holding periods and protection times and things like that. I don't know. Hey, look, I'm I'm a terrible scam artist, so don't ask me. But apparently, it must be lucrative enough because people are doing yeah. it. So they say file early, and uh, less less likelihood you'll get you'll get your stuff stolen. Interesting. It is that time of year. Ah, oh, guys, uh, we can squeeze in more news story. Uh, one more news story, unless you'd rather go on to picks. It's it's, a, it's light on news. I'm gonna be honest. It's it's a slow time of year. We got. Uh... Oh wait, wait wait wait. We have to talk about. I saw. I see this. Uh, Apple should buy Netflix story, and I, I, we can talk about that. But I'd be more interested in talking about. Uh, oh, oh wait, maybe Colby can't talk about this. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Spotify what? buying Gimlet Gimlet podcasts. Oh shit, man! I saw that today. I don't know anything about that. Oh good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what we strive for here uninformed opinions yeah I mean, which is me not knowing said? anything about it doesn't mean anything it, it's funny i did see the story i even read the story and then i was like mm, i don't know if we can talk about this with colby so i left it out of the rundown but if colby uh, gives us the i, I up, charge boldly ahead dan doesn't dan doesn't care with no regard for Colby. Oh, Colby's a talented engineer. He'll get another job. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Spotify <laughs> reportedly in talks to acquire uh, Gimlet Media, the podcast uh, empire. I don't know. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch. We, <laughs> that, yeah, we've recommended many podcasts from them. I think I feel like Colby was the first one who really got me into Gimlet. We are fans. Uh, according to Recode, Spotify offering to pay more than $200 million for the company. Gimlet Media started back in 2014. That's two Instagrams. No, that no, that's like one. Sorry. That's twenty like percent of an Instagram. A fifth of an Instagram. Yeah. Um, Gimlet Media, of course, home to shows like Crime Town, Homecoming, Startup, uh, all sorts of other shows. I don't listen to anything on their particular network. Um, uh, acquiring something like Gimlet would allow Spotify to continue to develop its own line of original content um, as part of their focus on increasing their share of podcast downloads. Uh, online as they've recently made a big push into guys uh what could we sell ourselves to spot what is the coffee and beer podcast network worth to spotify 64 cents i <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i can upgrade. i can look into that can we work on like fluffing <laughs> our numbers or something look whatever it takes man right, we oh, have to have a pitch deck i'll do a road show we'll we'll do the whole thing it'll be Ooh, great bro, i would love a don't panic road show yeah going on the road flying around that would be amazing talking to bankers good morning goldman sachs <laughs> we are don't panic <laughs> we have tens of listeners um you know, i think in order to do this we need we need to rebrand and do the like the thing that the dale carnegie guy the guy who wrote uh 
uh, how to win friends and influence people. What's that book called? I um, mostly have. How to make friends and influence people. Something like that. And I learned in the podcast that I thought I recommended recently, the uh, the Dream, yeah, the Dream podcast that I recommended a couple shows back, that that guy, Andrew Carnegie, no relation to Dale Carnegie at all, he changed his name and then came out with this book knowing That's that funny. if, it, right, that to, he could use that that name to, to, to sell the book. So I think we need to do a similar thing. We need to come up with, we need to get ourselves mistaken for some other company some other podcast. Hmm. Hi, I'm Ellen Musk, and this is my company, <laughs> Podcast X. Exactly. Amazing. I like it. Um, so I don't know, guys. What do we? Any any particular? I just uh, yeah. I, I'm very curious because the obvious thing to do is uh, make Gimlet Media Spotify only. Um, sure. But and it, you know that would suck, and I wouldn't want them to do that. But if they don't do that. Then like, what's the play? They just make money off of. They just take the revenue that Gimlet makes and adds it to their own revenue. Companies typically don't buy companies to like add a constant number to their revenue. I think I know the play. What's the play? Because another company already does it. Worse, and it's. Uh, I listen to a lot of the uh, Earwolf shows, the Earwolf Podcast Network. Um, Pretty, pretty big guys, and they are owned or they bought Stitcher. They're the same company, um, which, by the way, Stitcher, an awful app. But I get suckered into paying, I think I, I pre-bought the year, but it's like 3 or $4 a month I pay to Stitcher because their shows on Stitcher are ad-free. And so I ah. bet if you take popular podcasts and with your Spotify premium subscription, the shows are ad-free... It's a value add for the. It's like Netflix pumping out more shows and movies. It's a value add to your existing premium subscription. Ah, uh, okay, I like that. And to me, that's. I agree with you, Dan. Otherwise, just selling ads against the show, unless again their goal is they just want to dominate podcasting, and this is right. just an easy way. Spend two hundred million, just get your foot in the door with something that's already popular. But again, if they don't make it a Spotify exclusive, what's What's the difference? Right, right. Okay, I like that. I'm on board with that. That's fine. Then All I right. get to not get those stupid ads. We're sponsored by Squarespace. Oh, I, I, I can't listen to podcasts with ads Are you anymore. tired it drives of me your crazy. toothbrush and the... Would you like some new underwear? Oh, look, a box of snacks delivered to my door every month. Where can I sign up? <laughs> I've heard one of those in a while. Mm. Those kind of fell off. Did they? I, I genuinely don't listen to podcast ads anymore. Not that many, anyway. Um, I either skip through them pretty aggressively or uh, or I do no ads. I remember I remember when podcasts, it was, you had, there are two types of podcasts. There are podcasts that nerds listen to, and they sold things like Drobos and uh, online backup software. What were those Scott E. Vest shirts with all the <laughs> pockets please. in them? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Or it was NPR. I was like, this is sponsored by the MacArthur Genius Grant. Yes, exactly. The <laughs> so John T. and Dolores D. Right. <laughs> and that was it. There's was, there was nothing else. And now we got these stupid toothbrushes and underwear. And mattresses and meal kit services. That, that, by and by the way, that is one Did of my... Did you have a Blue Apron this week, Todd? No, let me tell you. Blah, 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 blah. It was maple glazed chicken and... But that is one of my favorite games, though, is to guess the meal kit service because they'll always start the ads by like, you know, I don't always have the time to cook at home, and I wish it were easier to get meals delivered to my house. I'm like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And I, That's why I subscribe to Blue Apron. I'm like, oh, it was Blue Apron. <laughs> uh, this is the thrill of my life. It's very sad. But uh, apparently there's money in podcasting. No one told us. No. But uh, But good for them. I saw a tweet today that said uh, that a and d session really happen if you didn't make a podcast out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because oh. it's true. Ouch. Yeah. You burnt. Um, yeah. So there you go. If anyone's interested, we are for sale. Uh, guys, we're going to move ahead on to picks for this evening. Um, we got a couple really neat ones in here. Uh, and I'm going to have Dan go first because Dan never gets to go first. And I don't think that's fair. Thanks. Okay, so 
I last week it was incredibly cold in New York. And I really wanted to know exactly how cold it was. But I have ancient uh, uh, radiators and no thermostat. So, and but um, here's the, okay. There are two. There are two things I want to. I want to know how cold it was, and I want to track it at least minute by minute uh, throughout the day. Because my suspicion was that my the the temperature was fluctuating wildly. I built something to do this a couple of years ago out of a Raspberry Pi, uh, but I just didn't want. I just didn't want to. I'm sure it didn't work. I disassembled the like breadboard. I didn't have time for it. So I went on online and I was like, "Is there like some Wi-Fi connected thing that like is cheap and all it does is measure the temperature?" Um, no, you can get things that measure temperature. They're not cheap or they're not Wi-Fi connected. So I got a cheap. Not Wi-Fi connected thing called the Sensor Push Wireless Thermostat slash Hygrometer, which is for um, humidity. Uh, I have no idea. So you 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 tip you take this thing out of the package. You install the app on your phone. You you touch it to your phone, and just like I always wanted my headphones to work, it just boop. It turns on, and you're you're off to the races. There are no batteries, as far as I can tell. You don't have to charge it. It just sits there, and Bluetooth low energies over to your phone whenever you walk by the new data. And it can keep, like, days of data at a time without you being home. So here, I don't know if we can see this. Yeah, we sure can. Yeah. This is, uh, here. Wow. This is, since I got it, the, the temperature and the humidity uh, through the week, you can go into, like, just the past hour. And see like pretty detailed views. Oh, look at that. Um, oh. I'm thinking of getting a lot more of these. They're they're it's fifty bucks, not a lot more. But like it'd be cool to put one in the refrigerator. Um, you can set alerts so I can say like, hey, if my refrigerator like stops working, send me a notification. That and it actually does work through a refrigerator, even th despite Indiana Jones using it to survive a nuclear bomb. This thing will send signals out of it. It looks um, like you can get a Wi-Fi gateway for them, too. Yeah, and I thought about that, but I was like, I don't care what temperature my house is when I'm not there. It's like, that doesn't matter to me. I would like to know what the temperature was like while I was gone, but I don't need to know that while I'm not there. I, it would be cool if I could, but it, I didn't think it was worth, uh, how much is this? Another $100. Like, for that money, I could get two more of these things and, and have even more fine-grained views mm -hmm. and graphs. You can export CSVs. Uh, it's pretty cool. I wish it was a little cheaper, but uh, it works great. I I'm shocked at how good it works. Because because they I couldn't there was no like cool review on the wire cutter or anything, so I was pretty skeptical. But uh, it was easy to set up. It does exactly what it says. Hmm. Neat. I'm so mad at you, Dan. Why? How many did you just buy? Uh, oh, I'm so close. Because <laughs> I am, as most people are aware, a very anxious person in general. And part of owning a home is being anxious that everything in your home is going wrong. And right. that's why I have so much. I already have smart water sensors in my basement in case there's a leak. And God, right. I would love to put these all over my house. Unlike you, Dan, specifically when I'm not home. So I know what temperature, like, because I have pipes in my bed. I already had a pipe freeze on me in my house. So Yeah, the pipes. Yeah, that's a good oh, snap. Use. That would be uh, that would be helpful. I wonder. I wonder if you do. Do like the iPads have Bluetooth low energy? Uh, the newer ones do certainly. Yeah. But the other thing too is. Yeah, but I still don't know if the. Yeah, if it would push an alert to all of your Apple devices, not just one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. a good. That, that is a good idea though to use an iPad. Yeah, I mean, just even the iPad Air. Has Bluetooth Low Energy 1.0. Yeah. Um, Interesting. It, it would also be really cool if, because I'm pretty sure does the Apple TV have Bluetooth 4.0? Because that would be awesome. I think it does because that's how a lot of HomeKit stuff works, right. right? Yeah, I just don't know if this specific device is uh, compatible. Yeah, it does have Bluetooth 4.0. Well, yeah. okay. Hey, this is great. Check it out. Uh, sensor Push. Uh, is the uh, the company. Uh, you can look it up on Amazon. We'll have a link on the website. You should go there, buy it. We'll get about three cents every time you purchase one, so purchase a lot. <laughs> um, 
I'm going to go next, and I think Colby's got a fun one he can send us out on. Um, uh, mine falls under the category of uh, Kickstarter-y stuff I think is neat and want to buy, but probably won't. Okay. Um, and it's just this neat little, it's called the Wi-Fi Porter, and uh, it is available for pre-order right now. Uh, and it's essentially just a little wooden block that when guests oh. come over to your house, they just tap their phone against it and join your Wi-Fi network. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, it is like not the most ingenious thing ever, but at the same time, I'm like, that's kind of neat. Like, I don't need it, but I kind of want it. And like, if you had like an Airbnb or something, like that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Um. Uh, apparently, it works with especially the newer phones. It'll just do it automatically on like slightly older iPhones and Android phones. Um, it pops up a website, and you can join from there. Um, hmm. Using um. NFC and there's also a QR code on the bottom if they have a an incompatible phone without NFC. So it's just a neat little it's a neat little Wi-Fi puck. Uh, forty bucks. They have a leather limited edition leather version for sixty that's sold out. Uh, but for forty bucks you can get one. Uh, just these nice little wooden pucks with uh, NFC built in. So it's very cool. Eh, I don't know. I just saw it and I'm like, you know what? That is kind of neat. I kind of want one. I'm not gonna get one. <laughs> I want one. Oh, there's only 50 of the leather ones? It's a limited edition. Uh, it's Italian leather. I missed out. Straight from have Italy. You, have you looked at any of this company's other products? They have other products? Yeah, at the top it says products. Oh, and shit. And I clicked it. There's all kinds of shit. Oh, shit. Oh, there, there must be one of those design houses that just make random stuff. Isn't that the dream job? Just come You're up just with like, ideas for stuff. Let me just make a Mac app where I can autograph things. It's like, oh. Okay. They have a device so you can mount things to your laptop. Look at that. <laughs> wow, this is great. <laughs> Look at that. You can attach your phone to your laptop. Holy smokes. I love it. I love it. They got it all. Oh look! Did a... you see? The, I don't know where it was, but there was one picture with like eight devices, like all around a, a MacBook. This is great. Well, they have a starter bundle, so you can get one of everything they make. Ooh, oh wow! Only one hundred and twenty dollars. Ooh, tempting. Very tempting. Okay. Anyway, getting Wait, distracted. Is that an actual baseball? Uh, I think it's. I think it's a uh, oh, software it's just... for doing signatures. They're just over there in Montclair, New Jersey. Dude, get on it. This is great. Scenic Montclair. All right. So that is the Wi-Fi Porter. We'll have a link to that on the website as well. Colby, take us home. What do you got? <laughs> uh, I have a I have a Twitter account that I like. Um, it's like a different take on the the cute animals Twitter account, uh, where unlike I feel like many many cute animals accounts where they focus on one specific kind of animal, uh, this this Twitter account does not uh, discriminate by creature type what I, I don't i don't know how to say kind of animal right like unlike we rate dogs they don't just tweet dogs um so it's called it's called round animals their their uh their handle is under uh, is round underscore boys and it's just like really fat animals <laughs> like there are like raccoons and seals and hedgehogs and dogs and cats uh and sheep and they're all really ridiculous. There's a chinchilla riding a turtle. It's amazing. Uh, so I don't know if, <laughs> if you need a fun Twitter account to follow. It's a really good one. They don't tweet too much too. And they haven't like, uh, you know, they don't have like branded swag yet. So you don't get like their, their home rolled ads. Uh, and <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I think it's great. I've been sharing some on the video version here for folks to see. And these are some round boys. Uh, the uh, account name is at round underscore boys is uh, how you can follow them on Twitter. <laughs> this is great. These animals are so round. It's, it's, it is as advertised. It is a treat. Very cool. All right. Fun stuff, guys. Fun stuff. We did it. Yay. Great show. I think we really revolutionized a lot tonight. The world will never be the same. I think you're right. For better or worse, who knows? We'll look back at this after Colby is a uh, is a senator, and we'll say this is where it all began. 
It all started right here. Uh, which reminds me, I got to start on that 501c paperwork to uh, to start the Colby pack. Um, make sure I don't forget because those contributions are going to really pile up if we don't start filing them properly. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on this episode. What a treat this has been. Um, before I mention everything about our show, I do want to quickly mention, uh, because I do love the cross-promotion, over on Up for Debate at UpForDebate.tv, last week we did our Super Bowl prop bets, which was a lot of fun. Matt and I made predictions all about the big game and did a little preview. This week, I don't know what we're going to talk about for an hour because there wasn't a lot of football going on, but we are going to recap <laughs> the bets. And... Uh, I guess it's not really a spoiler because we live tweeted the game. So, did you guys know? Did you guys see who won? No. The Super Bowl prop bet. Spoiler alert. Matt beat me. Oh. Unfortunately, I lost. It was a harsh loss. I made so many bad decisions in retrospect. It was shameful. Oh, no. Didn't go well. But we're going to have fun talking about it. That will be this week over at UpForDebate.tv or wherever you get podcasts. This show, Don'tPanic.io, of course, our website, go there. The audio, the videos there. It's a wonderful website. We'll also have the links to the picks. It's a great way to find out more about the items we've talked about. Uh, and, of course, you can subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Spotify, of course, we're there, along with the Gimlet Media guys. You can also get us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, anywhere you get podcasts, uh, and the video version on YouTube. And, of course, you can get a hold of us at Don't Panic Show on Twitter. It's a great way to follow us. Or email us, Show at gmail.com. We do read your emails when we get them. Uh, that's going to do it for this week. We're going to be back next week with another fantastic new episode. But until then, on behalf of Colby and Dan, I'm Sean. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time for more Don't Panic.